Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and to a look at what's new in the world of bike tech in the last week or so, coming up in today's video. Windfield 14.0 has been released with a few feature additions and a way to potentially make it more accurate that's worked for me. The Outrider tyre pressure sensors are now recording tyre pressure data to the fit file and the latest update allows that data to be reviewed within Garmin Connect. New rear light radars from both BBB and Signa have been announced this week. Polar H9 and H10 heart rate monitors both get multiple firmware updates. Wahoo Element Series 3 bike computers also get firmware updates this week. Hammerhead add custom alert notifications to the Karoo 2 and the Karoo 3. There's been a price drop on the Asioma Duo by Favero, remaining low even after the Black Friday sales. And Wahoo sues Jet Black again. Okay, starting off with Windfield 14.0, the Connect IQ add-on for Garmin devices, one of the best Connect IQ add-ons that I've installed on my Garmin Edge computers. Look, the core functionality of this is pretty basic. It'll use nearby weather stations for wind direction and speed and place an arrow on screen indicating the wind information relative to your direction of travel. Using Windfield on the Edge map screen is my default go-to for riding. I can look down at my bike computer and know exactly what's coming up. Will I have a tailwind or a crosswind or a headwind after the next turn? Or how far do I have to ride to the next intersection to get out of the wind? I've done a whole video on Windfield a few years back, which is due for a refresh given how much Scott the developer has crammed into this new edition. Notable updates in version 14, finish notification. So ultimate level subscribers can now send an automated email to a partner or a friend as they approach the end of a route. So listed there is great for meeting at the pub or at the finish line. Also compare weather sources for the best recommended data source for your area. Plus a few other quality of life additions roll out with this update. So this compare weather sources, this has been really useful for debugging why one of my edge units was always a little off on the wind speed readings. Well, sometimes a lot off. On the Windfield website, clicking on compare weather sources allows you to enter your location and review the current data for each station. Now, for whatever reason, weather bit is always well off the mark. And that's what one of my edge units was set to as its weather source. So switching to AccuWeather in the Windfield Connect IQ for that edge, which is always most accurate for my location, had things lining up as I expected. Problem solved. Next up is the Outrider tire pressure sensors and an update that's come to those. Now these are inline hidden sensors for tubeless tire setups, which I'll be doing a whole video on in the coming weeks. These will now record tire pressure data to the fit file and with the latest update this week, allows the data to be reviewed within Garmin Connect on both mobile and web. Now initially these only displayed data on the edge screen and alerted on pressure drops or punctures. This update brings them very much into line with Zip TireWiz. Now I found these pressure sensors to be great so far and there's potentially something up their sleeve which could make them even more interesting to use. Stay tuned on that. Polar H9 and H10 firmware updates. Yes, the workhorse heart rate straps or heart rate monitors that go on and on and on, unless it doesn't, my H10 has died after a few years. But anyhow, the H9 I have is still working. There's a two-step update for these this week, bringing to these secure Bluetooth connection compatibility, lower power use when the sensor searches for a connection, helping extend battery life, enhanced connectivity to Android 15 devices, and they list other bug fixes and quality enhancements for better performance and reliability. So if you're the owner of a H9 or a H10 heart rate monitor, open up the Polar Beat app. I didn't have any luck trying to update with the Polar Flow app. Jump into the sensor details, perform the two firmware updates they've released for each device. Now, I don't know why each device needs two updates, but they do. After the update, the H9 that I have hasn't missed a beat. Yeah, I went there. Onto the radar market, which is getting pretty crowded, mostly with company that you don't want to keep. Anyhow, BBB announcing the Signal Radar this week, which has a built-in speaker for standalone operation. I guess this means you'll get butt beeps if it's used without a head unit. They're claiming up to 190 metres detection range. Now that's up two. A few other radars have this claim and are typically on par with the Varia at 140 to 150 real-world reliable detection range. Sigma out of Germany are also in the radar game with the Ricoh Link. There's two models, the 80 and the 81, the 80 being zero compliant for Germany. Now I'm told the Ricoh, both models, will be only available in Europe. It has all the standard specs as you'd expect, 140 meter detection range, up to eight vehicles, USB-C and IP67. I'm doing my best to get my hands on both of these radars and take them on my radar test loop. It has a number of trouble spots that sorts the good from the bad, so stay tuned. Keeping on the theme of firmware updates this week, we see new firmwares for the Wahoo Element Series 3 bike computers. Now back in October, Wahoo added custom waypoints to their Series 3 computers. This week there are bug fixes and stability improvements on all three, as well as six new turn-by-turn -turn language voice navigation options for the Ace and the Roam 3. 
And lastly, on the bike computer firmware update side of things, the Karoo 2 and the Karoo 3 get firmware updates that introduces custom alerts. The quick notes on that one is that you can create one-time repeat or event-based custom alerts for each profile. Custom alerts will display in the notification drawer during each ride, and riders have the ability to set a snooze timer. The snooze timer allows riders to snooze the alert and be re-alerted after the snooze period has passed. As with all these firmware updates, I'll put links in the notes below so you can click through for more information. Next up, we see Fivero Asioma with a price drop. Now, the duo prices have remained low even after the Black Friday sales. These prices are the new normal. Now, these are the duo, the dual sided pedals from Fivero released back in 2017, some of which I still use today in my testing pool. They're now listed at $4.99 US on the Fivero website, plus or minus a few dollars. It was $5.03 today. They're also listed at $4.99 over at Power Meter City. Here in Australia, they are listed at $8.99 Aussie dollars or very close to, and that's pretty good. That brings the duos into line now with the Mugene P715 power meter pedals. Hmm. Now also worth noting, if you are doing any importing yourself internationally, you'll need to factor in taxes and duties. And finally today, Wahoo sues Jet Black again. News broke over on the Escape Collective website on this one. Look, in a nutshell, it appears to be along the similar lines as the last action Wahoo took against both Zwift and Jet Black a few years ago. This time, Jet Black and their victory smart trainer is in the crosshairs. Now I'm no patent lawyer, but I can't work out why Wahoo hasn't gone full shotgun at other trainer companies and their trainers too. There's likely more to it. Look, as these cases aren't something these companies discuss beyond generic statements, all we can do is sit back and watch the lawyers rack up billable hours. Hmm. And on that note, that's a wrap for what's new in the world of digital bike tech this week. As always, hit that thumbs up here on YouTube if you found this informative, and to show your support for these videos, it's much appreciated. Thanks for watching.